How you feeling, brother? Feeling good. Day in the books. Ready to get this road now. Let's go. For sure. I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. All right. So, who is Tyrese Johnson? For anybody who may not know. Um, I consider myself a simple person from New Orleans, Louisiana. I grew up uptown, and I went to Booker T High School, Booker T Washington. It was a new school, and I'm a simple person, very outgoing, outspoken. At sometimes, sometimes I'm a little shy, shy from it, but. When I feel like I need to speak, I speak. Other than that, yeah, that's who I am. Come get to know me. All right. Um, you just spoke on where you where you briefly said you're from New Orleans, but yeah. would you uh, could you give a little more uh, intel about how would you say where you grew up at made you who you are? Um, where I grew up at, uptown. It really made you grow up quick. So, you know, running the streets late at night, not even running the streets, you know, being bad or nothing, just like, if you're going, you playing football with your friends or you just out chilling, don't want to be inside. Just really got to adapt to, you know, how the um, city, how the city work. You know, you know, when the street lights go off, you got to be in, because you know anything can happen. You know, um, so really just, Having to adapt to the city of New Orleans, really have you growing up fast, and how can I say it? It's like you gotta be on your P's and Q's at all times. Even if you're not in it, but you just won't be safe. Yeah, that's how I can say that. So, um, for someone who's never been to New Orleans or thought about New Orleans and doesn't know what to what picture to paint in their head, what would you what would you say to them? I would say New Orleans is very good if you come down here for a few days. Like the food is amazing. I say we got the best food down here. And the French quarter is always turn you come have a good time. But you know yeah, you don't want to be here too long, I feel like, because I want to leave, and just people here, it's just bittersweet, I can see that, it's bittersweet, so, it's, I love it and I hate it at the same time. So, it's an interesting way to put it. What, uh, when you were growing up, was there anybody who you looked up to as a role model, and if so, what was it that, that uh, you drew to like about them? Around the age, like young, young. I could say who I looked up to. I look up to, like, my coach. He was a coach. My coach, he was Coach Lester. My, um, I was so young, and he, um, I was playing football in Uptown Shakespeare Park and he saw me one day and he saw me playing he saw me he wanted me to come with him and he started a team with me and his sons and he took me from there he's taught me a lot like growing up how to treat people how to save money and how to be a good person like and just stay away from, like, even though there's a lot of stuff going on in the city of New Orleans that you don't got to be a part of that. You can do what you want to do. And that just made me who I am today. So, uh, you spoke on your person of, of choice was your coach. Yeah. For someone who never plays sports or who doesn't, who isn't very athletic, like, how would you say, would you say that having that, that person to go to for answers or um really just that person to look up to would you say that played an a impact like would you say there's something that everybody needs to have at least somebody that they can look up to or go to for answers or really you know just be heard or be seen you feel me like would you yeah. say that that's an important part 
I say that's very important because uh, as when you're younger, you don't really know nothing. You only know what somebody tell you. So somebody you can go to and you can ask them questions. They can give you advice and help you. It's very, very vital because they're going to make you who you is because somebody can feed you bad stuff and they can feed you good stuff. And what you learn as a young one is how you bred it to be um, once you get older. And that's the mindset you're going to always have. So, And they can stick with you for a long time, that good stuff and the bad stuff. So it's all about habits. You have good habits and bad habits. For sure. It's a great answer. I like that. Um, would you say, what's something you think your community needs to implement that will help the coming generation get ahead? So like those after you, or the people, technically our generation, because we both young, but. Well, say that one more time. What would you say is something that your community needs to implement that would help get the, the next generation ahead? With the, with the changing times, because you know, me and you, we had social media at an earlier age, like around 10, those yeah. teenage years, but they having it from birth, basically. So, like, it's three year olds, four year olds on TikTok. Like, what would you say that, what would you say that is something we need to get? So, uh, what would you say is something that you think your community needs to implement that would help the coming generations get ahead? I think that the people who made it and can say they are a little bit successful, I think they should come back. And not even, you know, just give back, give knowledge back into seeing like how they did it and what the stuff they had to go through and just share these stories, like what I'm doing now, just share these stories and give people hope, you know, your community especially. Cause you know they need that. Nah, that's real. That's real. Uh, what would you say? What's the code of belief that you live by? And uh, where did it come from? Code of belief. Let me check my notes. Um, I got this quote from my. Uh, Albert Einstein, when he said that um, what is right is not always popular, and what is popular is not always right. So, like, what do you mean by that? I think he's saying that sometimes you're gonna have to do stuff that some people don't think is cool, uh, people not like it, but you know, it's the right thing to do. And I feel like I always wanna do the right thing. Nah, that's, that's, that's real. That's real. Um, what would you say to your 13 year old self? Um, I would tell myself to keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Don't ever um, limit dreams. Don't ever stop dreaming that you can't be something. Like, if you got more than one dream, do all of them, you know? Don't just stick to one thing. That's real. Um, what do you see yourself in five years? Um, I don't know. I don't have a clear picture yet. It's like blurry right now. So I'm just keep building from where I am now. And where I want to be in five years is helping others and just happy. I want to be happy. What does happiness look like for you? Is that is that a certain is that a certain financial status? Is that a relationship status? Is that like what does what does happiness look like for you? Happiness is like waking up every day and saying I can count on someone 
It's not about the money. Just know this person or these people gonna be there for me. Like, loyalty is happiness for me. Loyalty. That's right. That's right. So, um, how would you describe your high school experience growing up out here? Um, my high school experience, I say I had a good time in high school. It was fun. Um, met a lot of lifelong friends in high school, really. And football and basketball was fun too. Just being um being a um school athlete. And really not using that. Um not using that to be little people, but using it to help people. That's real. What is uh what is your special item? Um, this basketball helped me a lot growing up because it kept me out the way for real. As I'm saying, like all I wanted to do was go shoot hoops with my friends. We all went. If I was going, we was all going. So like. If everybody going to a party, I'm going to shoot hoops. Because I always wanted to get better. And this helped me a lot in life because the mindset I got from trying to get so better at this, I just kept it kept it going with everything I did. Because like, I always wanted to be the best at what I do, no matter what I was doing. Because that's just the type of person I am. So why do it if you're not going to be the best at it? And I like, I hated being average. And so like, that's what kept me going. With, that's why it's so special to me. Because the mindset. It's always about your mindset. For sure. Um, would you would you say that it's a it's an important part to have for people to have like hobbies or things that they genuinely enjoy doing, like things that they're passionate about? Yeah, I do. Cause if not, I think what's the point? Like just like having a job that you don't really like, you're just doing it for the money. So you're just waking up every day and getting money. But when are you gonna get to be happy and stuff like that? So I feel like finding what you love to do, even if it's late, as long as you find it and you stick with it, that's important. Because happiness, everybody don't find happiness, I don't think so. But if you do, you should keep it and value it. Value it. Five, four, three, two, one. Um, could you tell us about your college experience as a student athlete? Um, college was a lot for me. Coming out of high school, I had, I was attending East Mississippi, like two hours away, very, very country, small school. A lot of people know it from um, Last Chance You on Netflix. I got up there the first day um, Coach Ramon, he, was, he dropped me off at the time. I just got up there, not an hour in. I got up there, I unpacked my stuff. They leave. So I'm sitting in my dorm room. I decided to go get some extra work in, so I leave the dorm room. I go to the field, and I um, was running routes or whatever, and I pulled my hamstring. I think it's the same one I pulled in high school. And it was just like crazy to me. So I told my coach, and he was I mean, he was very mad because it's my first day, I didn't get a chance to do nothing. Throughout that whole time, I never got a chance to show what I can do because I was hurt. You know, hamstring is a lingering injury. So it was like the last meeting of us. I don't know whatever we was doing, the last meeting, he called me in. 
And he told me straight up, like, um, we haven't seen what you could do. And he told me that I was supposed to be competing for a spot, which I didn't know. But that's what he said. And I was just like, it's cool. I know it's a business. So I called my mama right away. She came and got me the next, I think, next three days. I just stood in my dorm room for three days waiting for my mom because I was so mad that it happened. So I got on the road and she came and got me. I hit up my trainer, AB, and I told him we need to get after it and I'll get back to the city because I was mad, mad for real. So then I did that. A couple months I got back on my grind. We got it in. A couple schools. I was hitting up schools, you know, he was hitting up schools for me. Some schools was like, shying away from me because how I treated them. But like, cause I, when I was coming to high school, I was like full star. And a lot of schools hit me up and it was real, real, real overwhelming for me. So some schools I can't even, you know, I didn't get a chance, to, I didn't even know they text me. So they was like, nah, he ain't never hit me back when I was trying to get him. So I was like, I understand that. So I was just living with what I got. So when school was coming back around for the semester, Northwestern hit me up on um, Grambling, Southern, and schools such as that. So I made a decision to go to Grambling. So I was at Ground for like a semester, one semester. It was real cool. I think I was, I was doing my thing practice it was all right the school was good itself but I felt like I was losing the love for the game then I came home I think after the semester packed up all my stuff and I never went back and that's just how that went what could you say uh, what would you say to a, a high school student athlete who is thinking of pursuing uh, athletics on a college level, what would you say to them? I would say be in love with the grind and the outcome that you get from it. Like, love getting better like, because it's going to help you in the long run, the journey. That's what it's all about. It's gonna make you who you are. Even if you don't you know, make it to the league or whatever, your journey gonna make you a man. It's all the work you put in. It's gonna translate to something else. That's real. How would you say? Um, you said that you had a hamstring injury. Yeah. Did that happen first in high school, and then it kind of carried over into the college level, or how did that go about? Yeah, I think I had. Pulled it. I was on um, one day. I was with my little nephews and nieces. I brought them to our rail park one time. We was just chilling, running, and I was racing them. And it pulled. I pulled it that day, and it just. I tried to come back from it like I think two, three weeks. I didn't even remember the hamstring injury. I thought I was good, and it just happened again and again and again. Like I pulled it multiple times, like six, six times. No kidding. So then I think. It just came back again when I got to college. Even though I was scratching it, I still come back. So it's just a very lingering injury. You really need to rest and heal up before you come back from it. Would you, um, how would you say, was there, when it happened, was there any resources? Like, was there any, any athletic trainers or anything like that? that you knew of that you could go to to help like properly recover from that injury? Did you feel like you was pretty much like judging it showing yourself or like on your own? So to speak? Um, I think the first times in high school, I was judging it myself because I didn't know much about a hamstring until I pulled it. So when, you know, when stuff happens to you, you go look up like what the hell. So it happened like five times. So I wait a week or two, then they'd be feeling good. And I'm like, I'm straight. Cause I was like, I think it was summertime and I was just, I was getting work in and it was like, I couldn't get no work in. So I'm like, I gotta rush to get back on the field. Cause I'm trying to get better. Cause I always like to go work out at night and stuff. 
So when I thought I was good, I go do it again. It didn't happen again. Then I wait another two weeks and I said I should be straight now. It didn't happen again. So it really is like really take time. But once I got to the college level, um, I didn't really get no help on it. Would you say that? Would you say that you're like at 100 percent now with with that or like? Um. Yeah, I've been in some time off, so I say I'm 100 percent. Yeah. And uh, how did it how did it feel to because you said that you like you enjoy getting better like you you like to grind at things and work at things yeah how did it feel to be in a, in a situation where like you want to work at something but you so you have something like an injury holding you back what was the what was the like mentality in that um really because I knew I was going to college for football so. If I, I really, really couldn't do nothing on the field, so at home I try to um, I be looking up on YouTube how to read defenses because I play offense, so I was looking at stuff like how to read defense and um, break zone and stuff like that, so I can get better, you know what I mean, and smarter. So you would say that you just uh kind of used it, use the opportunity to like figure out other ways to improve. Yeah, if I couldn't do nothing on the field, so yeah, so get strong in the mind, really. Is there anything you would like to leave with the audience? Anything you're working on, anything, a quote, whatever, like, what would you like to leave with the audience? Um, shit, I'm Tyrese, this is my life. That's right.